Thank you very much for hosting this important workshop, and I'm honored to be representing European doctors here today. Um, in the past years, uh, several problems related to the safety of medical devices have been brought to our attention as doctors, and of special note was, of course, the PIP implant case of last year. Um, while that case turned out to be a fraud, it was to the detriment of many patients and damaged their health. The numerous serious adverse events experienced with hip implants is another case where patients were harmed. Now, the CPME has um, at least two papers on these issues, one of them uh, from the spring of last year, and the second one was adopted last Thursday. And in those papers, we encourage um, that in order to guarantee patient safety, vigilance on medical devices and legislation on the issue should evolve along the same principles as pharmacovigilance, as medical devices, are certainly a part of medical devices that you could call high risk, have uh, reached a degree of complexity that easily compares with the one in use in the pharmaceutical industry. And we propose in our papers that the EU Commission establishes a, a centralized monitoring mechanism to ensure the highest safety standards of notified bodies across the EU. Now, it may be said that the British Medical Journal case from October of last year, which was about faulty metallic uh, implants, exemplifies the necessity of state controls prior to CE marking and are associated certified suitability for marketability within the EU, at least for devices with high risk potential. The freedom to select a notified body anywhere in the EU creates a situation of competitive pricing among notified bodies which in turn results in the exploitation of any latitude in regulations in favor of manufacturers, enabling fast market access for new medical devices to the detriment possibly of device safety. High risk devices in particular demand higher market access hurdles, which as in the USA include the state licensing of a medical device and an obligatory clinical investigation which must document the effectiveness and safety of the medical device and not merely its suitability for its intended purpose. Now regarding single-use medical devices and reprocessing of such devices, we believe that in Article 15 of the regulation draft, um, is not, has, does not provide enough clarity about reprocessing medical devices, uh, disposable devices and or reprocessing of single-use devices. CPME recommends training and qualified monitoring as means to reach the most modern scientific and technological standards across member states so that the reprocessing of medical <coughs> devices may be safe and that distinction between disposable or suitable for reprocessing medical devices can be addressed further. So we thus encourage that the discussions on single-use devices are continued with a complete risk assessment report and impact assessment and thus taken outside the scope of the current draft regulation. And if I quickly look at the questions, yes, ma'am. Um, I can stop and come into it later if you like. Mm -hmm. If, if you have one sentence, one sentence is fine, but not it now. It can be a very long German no, sentence. Not if you, it can be a Thomas Mann <laughs> sentence, yes, I but you could not German. in one sentence answer all eight questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, really, uh, one point I want to make is that the concept of reprocessing single-use medical devices from the point of semantics is a paradox because either it's single use or it's not single use. So we have, you know, and, and the discussion I feel has not really taken place. There is a need for stricter distinction and, and always the safety of the patients has to be taken into account. Thank you. Ms. Fiedset, please. 
final comment on that. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of thinking just a few sentences like patient safety, pre-market authorization, um, innovation to be encouraged, definitions are lacking, they need to be clear. Um, so pr apart from the pre-market authorization, also post-market surveillance, we've got that. Prevention is better than cure, is one more thing. The example of the EMA, where you are trying not to duplicate work, but you set up something that is based on existing structures, was what we were thinking of um, when, when, when suggesting that there was a, there was a center, um, a European advisory structure set up for this. So this is basically what I want to say and, and uh, thank you for organizing this very interesting workshop and look forward to working with you some more.